Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of November 2020, which uh, technically is the longest week of the longest year ever. <laughs> this week, I've got four topics I want to talk about. The Mini 2 is here, and then we actually have a free course to go along with it. I'll talk about this in a second. We're going to talk about the end of the FAA IPP program. Now, the last P in there is a program already, so it's technically the FAA IPP. We'll talk about what it did and then kind of what to expect going forward. We'll talk about a group who plans on suing the FAA over remote ID when the final ruling is uh, proposed, is, is released. And the last thing is we have a free webinar coming up for our Pilot Institute students with Skywatch talking about insurances and drone insurances. So let's get going. The first thing this week, we've been talking about this for the last couple weeks now. First, it was kind of uh, a rumor that the Mini 2 was going to be coming out from DJI. And then finally, we found the box at uh, Best Buy last week, and then they told us that it wouldn't be released until this week. So uh, earlier in the week, DJI sent an email and said that something was going to be released on November 4th. And uh, as expected, the Mini 2 came out. Now, I want to apologize. Last week, I kept saying Mavic Air 2 during the video. Uh, we've been recording, as you may know, we have a deep dive course, a free course on how to use the Mavic Air 2. So I've been saying Mavic Air 2, Mavic Air 2 for a while. So now they came with the Mavic Mini 2, and then my brain just didn't make the connection. So I apologize for that. Some of you call me out on this. Uh, but they actually don't call it the Mavic anymore. It looks like it's just the Mini 2, this, which will make it easier so I don't make uh, a fool out of myself. Uh, big differences. Actually, you know what? I was... Uh, Here's one. This is the Mini 2 right here. And, uh, and this is the original Mini. Now you may wonder why I have one right here. Well, I'm actually uh, about to take it out to go and fly it. I get one last night and, uh, and then uh, I did a quick unboxing this morning. So the video will be posted uh, pretty soon on our YouTube channel. And, uh, but the main difference is really the, the, the form format. I was actually impressed. It looks exactly the same. It's just the exact same drone. But the, the difference on the inside is we have OQSIG 2.0, which we mentioned last week, versus the Wi-Fi on the original Mini. Uh, the OQSYNC is going to give us the ability to fly a lot further and also to possibly be using the smart controller. Now, the smart controller right now is being used for the Mavic Air 2, is used for the Mavic 2 series, the Pro and the Zoom, and then also being used by the... the um, the Phantom 4 Pro V2 version 2. So this is a, a good upgrade to me, I think, because if you have a smart controller and if they finally release the software, hopefully quicker than they did for the Air 2, it took uh, six months for them to do that. But if they do, then uh, you'll have one controller to control everything. And speaking of the controller, it is a new looking controller. So this is actually the controller right here which happens to be exactly the same controller as the Mini 2. Um, see, I did it. The Mavic Air 2. Uh, the only difference is really the pause. There's a pause button on the Mini and there's no pause button on the, on the Air, but it's exactly the same form factor, which I actually like. I think it fits better. Now, it's not so Mini. It's not nearly as small as what this thing was. This was the original one right here, so you can see the difference. But... Um, like I said, I like the form better. You can actually clip your phone up here. It's nice and secure. And, uh, and I think it just fits in the hand a little bit better. We uh, have raw. We have raw photos. People were wondering about this. We have raw photos and JPEG on the new version. Uh, only had JPEG in the previous one. And then we have 4K. That's the big difference as well. 4K, 30 frames per second, as opposed to 2.7K at 30 frames per second in the past. And then there's a strap to actually wrap around the drone in itself so that you can, and I'm probably not doing this right. I haven't put the, the strap back on, there you go. Um, and then you can actually trap the, uh, the propellers and everything so that the propellers are just not moving around like they did on the old one. So I think that's actually pretty cool. And then there's a new way to transfer images. And I, I, I'm not done going through the, uh, the manual because I get this thing last night late. And, uh, but there's a new way to transfer images and, and we will have a full course on this Mini 2 coming out very soon. But you can actually transfer the photos from the drone directly to your phone by doing a Wi-Fi connection without needing the controller, which I think is actually pretty smart uh, in terms of design. And I hope that they actually uh, put this into other drones in the future, or even, I don't know if they can uh, turn that on by software or, or if it needs another piece of hardware in there. Um, in terms of the software, we're still using DJI Fly with it, and there's gonna be new uh, functionality added. We have a boomerang, a quick shot, which wasn't there before, and then the other four uh, quick shots that you had on the original Mini. 
And then you also have the ability to do panoramics now. So those are the major differences that I have seen so far from, uh, from playing with this thing a little bit this afternoon. And, um, and I'll definitely have more. I'm gonna go fly both of them. I wanna do a battery test. I wanna do an image quality test. So you'll see a much more in-depth uh, review of this thing when, uh, when I have more time. But um, going on with this, we actually released yesterday a Mavic Mini Deep Dive course. If you're not familiar with our Deep Dive uh, series, we have one for the Mavic Air 2 right now. And I go in details about every single thing in the drone. I take the manual and I, and I, and I basically create a video version of the drone in itself using the manual. So if you don't like reading the manual, I don't, then you can just watch a bunch of videos. The courses are free and, uh, and we do this because a lot of people ask, why do you put this course out for free? And I do it because I want you to be safe flying a drone. Okay? And it's, business is not always about money. This is something that we do for the community. And, um, and, and it's just something that to me is fun because I get to fly the drone and I get to know more about the drone. So you'll find probably some things in there that uh, you've never even known the drone can do. So we have one for the mini and then we have one for the Air 2, and then obviously we'll have one for the Mini 2 coming out very soon. So um, the Mini is two hours of video content, and then at the end of it, I also talk about how to fly legally and safely as a hobbyist. So there's a little bit of a lesson for about 10, 15 minutes where I discuss all the things that you can do and that you can do, and then uh, how to do safely, how to submit airspace approval. All of that is all included in the course, so um, can beat the price, quite frankly. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the IPP, the, the integration pilot program that the FAA had put in place back in, I want to say 2017. And uh, the uh, Secretary of Transportation, Elaine Chow, she announced that the program was ended. Now, we've known this for a while. A couple of months back, I was at a conference and they were talking about just that. Uh, that was actually put in place for testing a whole bunch of new technology and new concepts. Uh, if you've, you've heard me say before, the, the UTM, unmanned traffic, traffic management, this is all of a concept at the moment, and the FAA is kind of building onto this, remote ID included, and, uh, and a lot of this testing has been done because of the IPP. Now, the IPP had... Um, nine different partners, nine different states and local governments that were involved in this. And so as the program is ended now, three years later, it's going to be replaced by something called Beyond. And uh, I don't really know actually what the, the letters stand for. Maybe I missed that in, in the article that I read. But there's uh, nine participants again this time, and they're going to be taking the IPP to the next level and working on new concepts. So uh, a big part of this is going to be the uh, UTM, the integration of unmanned aircraft into the airspace and how we do this uh, to take into account everybody who's gonna be flying from autonomous flights to uh, you and I flying our drones manually to other aircraft that are flying in the airspace. So it's a big concept. There's, um, there's a UTM a proof of concept or, or a concept of operation, it's called Con Ops document, that I would recommend that you sit down and read. There's a ton of really good information in there that kind of explains what the FAA is trying to do with UTM and how it actually works. Um, and, um, and they're coming up, I heard, with a version 3.0. This is version 2.0 now, and they're coming up with a version 3.0. So I'll definitely be reading that. And actually, when it comes out, I'll do a, a little video to kind of explain to you guys what's in there. It's pretty long. I think it's 60 or 70 pages of concepts. It's not the most exciting stuff, but this is the stuff that I actually enjoy reading. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is a group called Race Day Quads, and you may have heard them before. They're all about flying FPV uh, racing drones. And uh, they're getting ready to sue the FAA in the event that the remote ID uh, final ruling looks exactly like the NPRM, which, um, as you all know, is going to take a major dent on the uh, hobbyists that fly FPV and other people, quite frankly. But I think the, 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 the hobbyist community will be the most hit in this case because of remote ID. And, um, and what they did is they're putting together a team of lawyers that are going to be uh, suing the FAA and they have only 60 days to do this once the remote ID final ruling comes out. And so if it's not, if it's basically, if it looks exactly like the NPRM, they'll be taking action and they're ready to do this. So I'm gonna put a link down there if you wanna go take a look at what they're doing Doing. And um, and uh, and they're asking for donations. They're looking for quite a bit of money because, as you can imagine, this is going to be a very expensive endeavor. So I'm going to let you click on the link and then kind of see more if you want to see more. And the last thing that I have is we are working with our friends at Skywatch. Skywatch is an insurance company for drones, 
And um, we're going to have a webinar where uh, the, the folks at Skywatch are going to be answering your question. And this is actually only for Pilot Institute students. So I know some of you are and some of you are not. And uh, so if you're a Pilot Institute student, then you can actually have access to this webinar. And that's going to be on Tuesday, November 10th. Uh, that's this coming Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And uh, you'll have the ability to ask your questions directly to the Skywatch team. And then, um, and then they'll answer your questions. So make sure that you join. Uh, you can find the link in our Facebook group. So if you're part of our Facebook group as a student, then uh, you'll be able to access that. Make sure that you register for the event. And, then, uh, and I hope to see you there. I'll be out there uh, to, uh, to help filter questions. And, and I have questions myself that I want to ask because I hear them from you guys all the time. But if you have questions, that you want to ask, please make sure that you leave them in the comment and I'll, I'll make sure that I uh, um, talk to uh, and then I'll share your question basically. Uh, the last thing is we just hit 8,000 subscribers. So we're actually growing uh, pretty crazy with this channel and I love it. I love talking to you guys every week. I love the comments. I love when you call me out when I say something stupid, which I did last week with the, uh, the Mavic Air 2. So it's always, uh, it's always nice actually to see comments on Facebook that are intelligent. And I say this, I say this a lot because I'm always surprised by the people that come to the channel to watch the videos and actually engage with an intelligent conversation, which uh, if you've been online ever in your life, if this is not your first day on the internet, you know how difficult it it is. So uh, I really love the conversations that we have and, uh, and I don't always agree with you, but uh, I always uh, have respect for your opinion and I always try to engage with you and, and get more discussion. So uh, with that being said, I will see you guys next week. You will see more videos this week for the Mini 2. So make sure that you stay uh, around. If you're not subscribed, make sure that you subscribe so you can get notifications when we put new videos. And that's it. Have a great weekend and uh, go fly. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous out here. So that's actually what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put this video and then um, go out and go fly the Mini and do some, uh, some flying and have some fun. All right. See you guys.